This invention, known as the multi-rotor rotor, relates to helicopters and auto gyros. The model here is to illustrate the principle of the mechanism and not to define any of the major parameters. Rotorcraft has speed limitations which are governed by the advancing blade velocities becoming too high, inhibiting the progression of any speed increase, whereas the retreating blade becomes unstable and its aerodynamic performance deteriorates, commonly known as retreating blade stall. This invention addresses these two characteristics. The rotor system consists of a main rotor, the yellow blades, which are of the teetering type with collective and cyclic inputs in the normal fashion, though these are not shown on this model. At the extremities of the main rotor are two secondary rotors, colored orange, which rotate in the same direction as the main rotor, but with an angular velocity 50% greater than that of the main rotor. These secondary rotors are of a fixed pitch and also of the teetering type and in this example have the same radii as that of the main rotor. When the main rotor is driven it can be seen that the near side retreating blade of the secondary orange blade is retreating at a higher velocity than the tip of the main rotor by virtue of the doubling of the effective radius plus the extra 50% increase in rotor speed of the secondary rotor. The secondary rotor's retreating tip velocity is therefore two and a half times the speed of the outer edge of the main rotor. This is very advantageous. On the advancing side, the far side, the secondary rotor is progressing end-on to the direction of travel. The combined vectors of the secondary rotor tips in the direction of travel are therefore of a lower magnitude than normal. The near side retreating blade tip can be seen to be of considerably higher velocity than the main rotor. The core to the mechanism is a static shaft mounted within the aircraft which is connected to the main rotor head. This is the static shaft which has a lever on it and goes through the tube to the main rotor head. The cylindrical tube outside the static shaft is the drive to the main rotor. The static shaft has a bevel gear at its top end which meshes with two bevel gears on shafts which drive the gearboxes at the ends of the main rotor in such a way that there is a speed reduction of 1 to 2 to the secondary rotors so that they rotate at an extra 50% of the main rotor speed in the same direction as the main rotor. In practice, not shown here, the gearboxes of the secondary rotors do not swivel with the change in pitch of the main rotor blades and are mounted on torque tubes inside the main rotor blades from the main rotor head and therefore the outer gearboxes are isolated from pitch changes of the main rotor. The initial setup is in the position shown here where the near side retreating blade is in line with the main rotor blade when the main rotor blade is at right angles to the center line of the rotorcraft. The other secondary rotor on the advancing side is at right angles to the retreating blade this side and is end on to the direction of travel. By the very nature of the mechanism the two secondary blades will always be at right angles to one another at any point in their cycle. It can be noted that the radii of the second rotors can be increased to a maximum of root 2 times the radius of the main rotor before they interfere. <clears throat> at these radii, the retreating blade velocity of the secondary rotor would be at a maximum of 2.707 times the velocity of the main rotor tip speed. It can be argued in the hover the asymmetry of lift caused by the extra retreating blade velocity could be inconvenient even though the aircraft should be designed so that the main rotor cyclic input could cope with the asymmetrical lift of the secondary rotors. 
the asymmetry of lift can be removed, as we shall show later. The asymmetry of lift can easily be eliminated by rotating the static input shaft by plus or minus 90 degrees. If rotated 90 degrees in the direction of rotation, the high-speed secondary rotor would then be over the tail boom, giving symmetry of lift in the hover. Ninety degrees in the direction of rotation. And similarly, by advancing the static input shaft by ninety degrees, the high lift blade of the secondary rotor would then be over the nose of the aircraft, also giving symmetry of lift in the hover. back through the normal position to advance. With either configuration it's very easy to transition from symmetrical lift in the hover to the required optimum during takeoff and landing by simply advancing or retarding the static shaft by plus or minus 90 degrees. These two characteristics may be beneficial to the helicopters and auto gyros or simply to helicopters where the system is used as a lifting device rather than a high-speed aircraft. I shall now demonstrate these two alternative configurations and transition between them when the rotors are turning. Here the multi-rotor rotor is in its initial position for which it was designed and now we can transition the fast-moving blade to be over the tailplane by advancing the static shaft. And the fast moving blade is now over the tailplane. We transition it back to its original position and then retard the static shaft by a further 90 degrees. And now the fast moving blade is over the nose of the aircraft and back to its normal where the passing moving blade is on the retreating blade side. We will now show the two symmetrical lift positions from above. We start in the original position with the fast retreating blade and then, by rotating the static shaft 90 degrees as previously shown, the high lift blade transitions to be over the tailpane, giving symmetrical lift in the hover. As it can be seen, the high lift blade is now over the tailplane and by passing back through the normal position we can advance the shaft so that the high lift blade is over the nose also giving symmetrical lift. Here with the uh, fast moving blade over the nose of the aircraft and now I'll transition it back to be the um, fast retreating blade. This illustrates the ease in which um, the system can be altered to suit the conditions. We call this system the multi-rotor rotor, MRR or MR squared. Finally, we'd like to offer a thousand dollar reward to the first person to put on YouTube a flying model of a helicopter or an autogyro using this system. Our email is xaviator at yahoo.com for further information. And we thank you for your attention.